Grace to you and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Welcome to prayer. Welcome to the Spirit. Welcome to the Holy Spirit of God who holds us close no matter where we are. Welcome to love. The Gospel passage for this Sunday, the third Sunday of Lent, tells the story of Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. Many of us know that story and I will not examine it closely today. But I do want to use that famous verse of Jesus to orient my own remarks. God is spirit and those who worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. I greet you from the point of the Cathedral of St. Philip, property which is outside the building and which overlooks the magnificent Peachtree Road, the road which some say is the backbone of Atlanta. I have always felt this point to be a place of wonder and responsibility, a place of joy and of service. Today it is also a mountain of spirit and truth. To the woman at the well, Jesus said that the time will come when the true worshipers will worship God neither on this mountain nor on that one. When we are in the spirit, the place makes little difference. Even a grand place like the Cathedral of St. Philip. What makes a difference is spirit and truth. I want to speak about spirit and truth today. Let's look at truth first. We in Atlanta and in the United States and across the world are in the midst of a serious pandemic. An outbreak of a new infectious disease called COVID-19. It's a virus that spreads quickly and without prediction. It is serious. It will not be lethal for most of us, but it can be deadly for some of us. Sadly, some of us are probably carrying the infection right now without knowing it and without showing any symptoms. Sadly, some of us will get it soon. In the midst of this outbreak, the Centers for Disease Control recommends that faith-based communities cancel gatherings of over 250 people. In this kind of crisis, I trust the CDC, and I encourage all of us to trust their wisdom and guidance. Please practice social distancing. Please wash your hands over and over and over again. All this is truth. It does no good to deny truth. This parish, the Cathedral of St. Philip, seeks to gather in truth, and we seek to worship in truth. It's part of our character, part of our identity, to be people of truth from wherever the truth comes. But the Cathedral, and all of good faith Christianity, contains another character and identity. We are people of the Spirit. We are people of the Holy Spirit of God. We contribute a different element into a world of uncertainty and fear. That element is faith in the goodness of God and faith in the holiness of all God's people. It was faith in the holiness of God's people that prompted Jesus to engage a foreign woman, a Samaritan woman, at the well in John chapter 4. Following the example of Jesus there and elsewhere, Christians of good faith and of good will have not been afraid to reach out to other people, to trust and to love other people, to serve others. That is our heritage and our identity. We are restricting the gathering in community during this season in the interest of the common good. It is for the common good that we distance ourselves physically from each other. It's a way of loving our neighbor. It's a way of loving each other. Personally, of course, I have always been opposed to closing churches. Many of you have heard me say that year after year. I go to church on Sundays wherever I am because I'm empowered by the faith of people. 
People who round up the energy to walk on Sundays, who gather with each other, rich and poor, black and white, even healthy and unhealthy. My spirit needs that kind of holy engagement. Today, however, it is better, far better, it is far better and far healthier to suspend our gatherings together. Christians of truth and spirit believe something deeper. We believe that this physical withdrawal from each other, this social distancing, is for a season. This situation and this season of social distancing will not last forever. There will be an end. I look forward to the conclusion of social distancing. But the truth is, that the conclusion is not at all here yet. Indications are that these measures are only the beginning of our journey together. We must face that reality forthrightly and honestly. Still, we do not need to be afraid of it. Be not afraid are the words of our God through angels and through humanity in some of the most familiar words of our Holy Scripture. One of the most important features of our gatherings every Sunday is the passing of the peace. In a season of social withdrawal and social distancing, passing the peace is even more important. We can learn today and in this season something more powerful about the peace. Here is what we can learn. The passing of the peace is not always physical at all. Peace is not in the heartiest handshake you can produce, or in the tightest hug you can manage, or in the wildest backslap. Peace is in our eyes. Peace is in your eyes. Peace is in my eyes. Even if we cannot touch each other, physically at the peace, we can look at each other. We can signal with our eyes and with our bows that something deep and holy is holding us together, even in a season of anxiety and uncertainty. I've recently, I've recently been using another word for peace and for greeting, and I offer it to us today. It is the foreign word Namaste. In some cultures across the world, friends and strangers greet each other not with a handshake, but with a gesture, holding the palms together, fingers pointing upward, rather a prayer posture, and with the gentle word Namaste. Namaste means literally I bow to you. It is a word and gesture of respect and honor and love. It means essentially the holy in me meets the holy in you. It is exactly what some of us mean when we say the Christ in me meets the Christ in you. It is the passing of a deep peace between us. Let's try it right now. Here outside the cathedral, on this beautiful point, let's try it whether you are with me physically or not. Palms together, fingers upward, wherever you are. Namaste. I bow to you. The Christ in me meets the Christ in you. I love and honor you. From the Cathedral of St. Philip this morning, peace be with you. Spirit and truth be with you. Health and wholeness be with you. Namaste. We are in a contagious season, but we Christians have something. Indeed, people of good faith, no matter what religion we are, we have something contagious to offer the world that is more powerful than disease or fear or anxiety. We have the contagious peace 
of Christ. Please pass that peace on to somebody today. You do not need to touch them physically. You can deliver God's deep and true peace with your spirit, with your truth, with your eyes. Peace be with you. Namaste. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ, his Lord, and our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and upon us and remain with us always. Amen.